The Data Cloud Diary, Segmentation. This is where we begin creating sets of data to take actions on. Welcome to another chapter as we dive into Data Cloud and the Data Cloud Diaries. In the last one, we started building the full identity resolution and created the unified individual. What we're able to do is to take feeds of data from multiple sources and essentially find the unique individuals based on our matching rules. So now we've gone bringing data into the data lake objects to the data model objects and we have the unified individual. Now a really big power of data cloud is we still have the original individual objects and all those original data so we can see the different fidelity. We've then joined them together in to a single unified individual. So now we've got the unified individual inside of our data, but what do we do with it? And so segmentation is the next step where we look at our data and we start to put it into groupings that we can eventually take actions on. And so we're gonna be into the first building block of segmentation, which is taking our data and starting to create a grouping with filters and seeing what's in the count. And then after that will be another videos where we'll start creating actions where we can push data out and, and create actions. But today, segmentation. So here we are in Data Cloud. What I'm gonna do is create a brand new segmentation. This is going to be a grouping of data based on what's in our data model objects. I'm gonna pick my data space for privacy. Now we get to choose what to segment on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm, not, I'm gonna segment on the unified individual. This is the one that we created in the previous, in the previous video. And we're gonna call it the test two because I have a test number uh, two um, segment. And we get to choose where we're publishing, whether it's gonna be on um, this two years of data and publish to any activation target or seven days and go into marketing cloud. We're gonna create the standard publish. We're gonna create a no refresh schedule. We're gonna run it ad hoc, but if we were setting this up for a scheduled job, we would be pushing it. And now we're gonna hit save. So this is going to be a grouping of data. And what we now can do is we can now decide what data is gonna be in the group using what's called include rules and exclude rules. And so based on the object I chose, I can see my direct attributes. Here is my unified individual. And I can also see um, additional attributes from other objects. But what we're gonna do is there's our related objects. What we're gonna do is we're gonna focus in on very something very simple, not realistic, but very simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our direct attributes and I'm gonna take last name and I'm gonna drag it onto here. And some of my characters that I use it in test data did not have last names. So I put an NLM, no last name. What we're actually going to do is we're gonna, just for the sake of testing this, we're gonna exclude them. We're only gonna have individuals that are not, their last name is not equal to no last name. So this is not a realistic example, but it's a quick functional one. I've noticed that sometimes I have to hit the magnifying glass twice. So now we have a total current segmentation population of 160. That's what's been filtered in the unified individual. And I'm gonna hit done. And I can add another attribute and build a more complex case, but we're gonna stay with a simple one right here. Now we're gonna to go to an exclude. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we can show you how we can exclude. And we're gonna going to say if the first name, and we'll just say if it begins with the letter A, we're going to exclude it. So what we have is an include and an exclude. Include the ones that have a last name and exclude the ones that don't have A. Now these could have both been handled by includes or excludes, but I'm showing you that that's a two pass approach because you can actually create criteria on different things where you're including people on one set and then create a top level filter excluding them for another. So two different filters and we're gonna hit done and then we're going to save. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna start processing and deciding right now we have, it has decided that uh, there are 134 um, records that now meet their, that meet our segmentation. So we're at 80% of the total. So this is now an active segment 
with a certain criteria that will allow us um, to create this active group. And what Salesforce will do for Data Cloud is actually create these entries. So we'll know who's inside of this segment. Now, if we decide to segment and pull first name, let's say we say last name, we're gonna do an exclude, starts with, uh, let's say begins with, let's say we wanna get rid of um, last name starting with A. So this should narrow down. So this, and this is done with an and. We could have switched this to an or, but we're gonna leave it with an and. So we have an additional segmentation. We're gonna hit save and we should watch the counts drop. And there it is recalculating. And you'll see that our segmentation population has just dropped down to 129. Now, what I just done, did was I pressed the publish now, and I have published this segment. Now, typically a segment will create this categorization of data. It's going to create entries in the segment. So we'll know which individuals were added to what segment. And an individual can be in more than one segment. And then it would also typically take an action. And that's where we're going to be moving to in subsequent videos. We're going to be talking about what are called activations and activation targets. So I wouldn't publish this without an activation. We're talking about just the act of creating a grouping of data based on the rules that we looked at. Um, now, you can see here that this has been published. So we have the date with a full refresh. And we can see here, there are no child segments. You can actually have child segments. And what we do have is this has been published successfully. Now we can go in, it's not gonna be as, uh, as, as visual, but if we go into the data explorer, we choose our data space and we go to our data model, you can actually find we had the unified individual and here is our segment membership history and latest. So this, although is not as uh, easy to read, this is all the keys showing which unified individuals are in which segment. Um, and this way it's gonna keep a history as people are, as individuals are in or out of segments and we'll be able to track that. So we've brought our data in through the data lake. In the case of our examples, it can come in either from a Salesforce org in our case, we also pulled from an S3 files on Amazon S3. We brought them into the data streams and then through mapping, we brought them into the data lake objects, which were kind of the local unmodified representations. We did add a couple of formulas along the way. And then we did identity resolution with matching rules and we were able to create the unified individual. So now we have the unified individuals, the, the unique Steve Simpsons in the system. And now we're gonna decide of this total set of people, we're gonna take actions on sets of them. So the first thing we did with today's video is we created a segment, a segmentation. And this one was, although a little odd, which was just those with, with the last name and those that didn't begin with the letter A, we can create a, any type of tailored segment of data, some grouping that we wanna be watching for and taking actions on. Um, we'll be looking in subsequent videos on more you know, complex use cases, but we've created that segment. And now our next step is to create the activation targets and the activations so we can actually do things based on this data. And that'll be coming up very soon. I hope the, seeing this piece by piece is helpful for you. So I hope you enjoyed Segmentation Simplified. Join me again, same bad time, same bad channel. Subscribe to YouTube, Steve Tech Arc and www.stevetechark.com and have a great day.